this is a gloomy day in Spain. This is what I've been talking about when I say when it's gloomy and horrible outside, I don't have any sunshine. I have my indoor lights going for eight, sometimes nine hours a day, depending if I'm otherwise distracted, but there's mainly the purpose of the lights for eight hours a day. So I wanted to uh, also give a little insight into everybody that is new here and to say thank you so very, very much for subscribing to my channel. I really, really appreciate it. Danielle from Daniel's Orchid Ranch, thank you. A heartfelt thank you for the shout out and everybody that's come over from Danielle, I really appreciate having you here. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you want to see it, it is now December and all, well, 80% of my orchid collection is indoors. But I can give you a little bit of an insight of what is going on indoors as opposed to outdoors, but on a more compressed scale. So I'm gonna switch off the blurple lights and give a little brief rundown so that everybody is pretty much up to speed when they've watched this video. Again, welcome, welcome everybody that's new. This is, or should I say, <laughs> this was my dining room. The dining table is now my desk and it's just for the kids. The only things that get fed in this dining room are the orchids. But okay, let's just have a look-see. Now, I have shop lights and then I have a shelf along here with everything that it can fit on there and that's why I'm trying to keep the pots even because I can fit two rows along this whole shelf there. And that's why I also have, for example, a, a shelving system in the middle that has a different set of lights, which are the blurple ones for growth and blooming. Mine are extremely cheap. They don't actually even have a brand name. They're from China, but they work fabulously. I have great results with these. So for the time being, I have absolutely no intention of switching whatsoever. I would like to have more for these lower shelves down here because I think complex fowls, despite not being high light, they could appreciate a little bit of the purple as well. But for the time being, that is not in the budget. So let me just, in a compressed view, explain. We're facing south. I feel like an air hostess. <laughs> We're facing south. This is east. This is west. And then in my orchid tours during the summer, I had the east side, the south side, the deep south side, blooming alley, and the west side tours. So everything is a little bit compressed in this setup, but the principle is there. The only difference being my top guns that I have on my east facing part of the property that has super bright light and is extremely hot, they have to put up with just the blurple lights on the top shelf and some of them also on the middle shelf, and then some of them right up against the glass on the deep south. I have my Angraecums over here, which could also appreciate much more light than they're getting. They're getting residual light from the shop panels on the left and from some of the blurple that they can get, but it's, it's not enough to have this kind of a setup all year round, and I'm fortunate that this is only going to be a matter of months before the night temperatures rise again and they can live outside permanently. So they're only in because the evenings have dropped to single digits and that's not good, not for a tropical and graycom. So they normally would be outside and getting a lot more light than they're getting here. So bear that in mind, none of this is a permanent setup. On the west side, <laughs> I have my complex hybrid phalaenopsis on the top shelf that also benefit a little bit from the upper lights, the blurple ones up there. Again, I would love to have a rod right above them, but I'm trying to also keep it somewhat aesthetically pleasing instead of, you know, this is not my home, we rent, so I can't go all ninja. 
I've already done a lot, I would say, in comparison to what I should be doing. But anyhow, on the west side and right by the glass, of a, I have very high light orchids that are too tall. And now, because of the repots of this summer, they don't fit in their usual configuration anymore. So despite having all the space of shelves, it's the lighting issue that does not permit me to be as generous and spread them out as much. So they still look a little bit too cramped for my liking. But again, thankfully in my climate, it's only temporary. The Talumnias are here on their tray. They normally hang out on the west side and they have not been outside today because it's been drizzling on and off. And I have no guarantees of them drying off by nighttime. And I don't use a humidifier or any kind of heat mats anymore. I used to use heat mats. Um, I felt that I was losing orchids even though I used heat mats. So I don't use those anymore and I just try to work with the orchid as best as I can depending on the season and what the orchid is telling me at any given time and hope to get it right and not to lose any. So no humidifier. I do use slowly humidity trays which I don't have filled at this moment in time because we are expecting some days of rain. So the humidity here right now is 67%, which is plenty fine. And you can see it's 18 degrees Celsius in this space. The lowest it will ever get in this space is 16 degrees because I also do not use a heater. So whatever happens here happens based on what goes on outside. If I need to take the bite out of the air, I light candles for my orchids. <laughs> yes, they get the dining room and they get candles. It's also very rare that I need to do that, but it can happen. And maybe one or two nights I need to light some candles and it just takes the chill out of the air. But other than that, I just wanted to give an overview as to who is where so that everybody that's new to my channel and or has just watched this video for the first time can actually see the entire collection in one space minus 20 percent because some can live outside all year round but it's all they're all in here i would say all the ones that need to be i have this very limited space for extremely tall orchids they're my epidendrum crosses my guatemalensis lives here this year now for the first time my Cattleya Maxima lives here and everything else that needs highlight. Unfortunately, on gloomy days, these guys miss out because I don't get any sun coming in. But then they benefit from a lot of light on a sunny day because the angle of the sun is directly through the windows and will fall on these guys first before dispersing along the shelf and actually reach all the way to that back wall over there. And then I have my setup here where depending on where the light bars are, the purple lights, there's one. And then I put the smaller pots right underneath and then stagger height wise into the shelf. Not always the same because I staggered my purple lights on the shelves so that if there's any gaps in between, it might filter through. I don't know how effective, but so this one is in the middle, and then this is where I put the little ones in a row right under the light beam. The bigger ones a little bit more off to the side. And that is the plan basically for how I've set up the shelf in the middle here. This Phalaenopsis is facing that way because obviously the blurple light is on, so it's not getting any light coming in from the window, so I faced it the other way so as not to confuse it and then my summer bloomers are definitely not in the best position for high light but again this is all I have available at the moment and they're getting the residual light from the shop lights above. The gap here are the for Renantheras, the Citrinas, the Ascocentrum, they're all outside enjoying some of the drizzle. The temperatures outside are 15 degrees Celsius, warm enough for them to enjoy that drizzle. And I think they can stay out overnight. We're not going to get cold tonight. When it's overcast, 
the night temperatures stay warmer. I have not lost the spike on my Crestwood Tomorrow Star. That's great because that was forming outside before I brought it in. I was extremely mindful to match the temperatures indoors as well as outdoors before I brought the Crestwood Tomorrow Star in and the Angraic Embossery. So one day I just left all the doors open, watched the temperature of where they live outside, and then moved them when the temperature matched. And I think I got away with it. Got a great new root growing there. And I'm trying to maintain these root tips over the winter. If I grew these and successfully kept them going during the summer, my goodness, I should be able to do that during the winter, no? I think this is just a sight to behold. At the beginning of the summer of 2020, all these roots were in the apex and branched from here. I lost a few. Just the root tips, they stopped growing, but managed with the other ones and super thrilled about that. So, Basically, welcome everybody that watches this video. Welcome everybody that has subscribed in the recent days. Welcome everybody who has been with me from Jump Street. Thank you so very, very much. This is just a quick overview when I was banging on about gloomy Spanish winter days. This is what it looks like in my ex dining room on a gloomy Spanish winter day. And there's the lights on. And you can see, I'm gonna get away from the flickering. You can see that the complex hybrids up there and the little ones down there, they can get some residual light. Again, it's not 100% ideal, but so far it has worked. I may not get the right bloom count for my complex hybrids. If they had more light, I'm sure that they will actually have a lot more blooms than I've ever had. But I can at least get some, and I am just so glad to see some of them spiking again. When the day is sunny again outside, I'm gonna take all my complex hybrids and I'll show you everybody that's in spike that I have not seen for two years. Very excited. So thank you everybody. Thank you so very much. A heartfelt thank you to Danielle from Danielle's Orchid Ranch here on YouTube. Link to her channel will be in the description for the shout out. And I really appreciate you. I'm going to one day also do an update on my ICU orchids here. I am such a fangirl over Danielle and how she gets to rescuing Phalaenopsis. I try to copy her technique. I try to copy her methods. I have not been so successful. So yeah, I do fangirl over Danielle. Thank you very much, Danielle, for the shout out. I really appreciate it. And everybody else that had a quick look-see, have a wonderful day as well. Take care, and most importantly, stay safe. Bye.